I'd like to welcome everybody to the EXA seminar from the Body Fat Challenge. Um, this seminar is basically um, put together to teach you how to eat going forward. Now that the six weeks are over, um, the first thing I want to ask people is, you know, you want to continue eating well. Um, you spent six hard weeks getting yourself into shape, losing weight, uh, feeling better. You know, the best thing is making sure you're improving your health and immune system. Um, but now that the six weeks is over, I always ask people like, you know, where do you want to go from here? Um, what do you want to eat? Um, what are you supposed to eat now? So it's all great questions. So the first thing I ask people when they're done with the body fat challenge is, do you still want to lose weight or you just want to maintain where you're at? And most of the people when they come to the seminar live, they're telling me that they still want to lose. So we're going to pretend that people still want to lose. Now, um, some people lost everything they need to in six weeks, maybe want a couple extra pounds. Some people didn't lose as much as they wanted to lose. So you want to kind of continue on this good eating program. Some people lose it quicker than others. Uh, some people um, are able to put more time into it than others. So everybody will lose at a different pace. But uh, now that the six weeks is over, the um, focus of the seminar is people still want to continue to lose. Um, I usually tell people if, if you're feeling great and you're not uh, craving things, why add anything in? This is a great way to live. You learn how to eat properly, control your portions. You know what foods are best for your blood type and which ones give you energy and make you feel good. So why would you want to eat something different? On the other hand, there's some other people say, yeah, well, listen, I'm, I'm feeling well and everything, but I'd like to open up and try some other things. Um, so we will cover that in this seminar. Um, the first thing is we emailed a phase two uh, nutrition manuals out to everybody who finished the body fat challenge. You should have gotten that in an email. If not, just contact us and we'll get it, get it out to you. Um, in this manual are some uh, phase two nutrition options, which we're going to discuss today. I'm sorry. Um, also, there are lists for each blood type. Uh, phase two blood types. So um, what we have added, we've added um, starches that are good for your blood type, which you weren't able to have the first um, six weeks. And we're also adding in fruits. So we're going to teach you today, you know, if you want to add some starches and fruits, which ones can you have, how much can you have, and how do I add them into my program if I still want to lose. And at the end, we'll discuss how to add those in if you just want to maintain. All right. So the first thing we're going to discuss is how to add these starches in and fruits into your eating program and still continue to lose. So on your blood type sheets, which we have here, um, we have your proteins, fats, and vegetables you're allowed to have, which you all have. As I said before, we added a list of starches and fruits. So um, first thing I'll do is give you serving sizes. So if you want to add any fruit into your program, um, one fruit is measured with a fist. So it's the same as vegetables. We told you serving size for vegetables with one fist. Well, now a serving size for fruits are also one fist. Serving size for a starch is either one fist or one hand. And just an example, if you wanted a yam, serving size would be a yam about the size of your fist. If you want a piece of bread, and again, it should be gluten-free bread, which we'll discuss, would be one slice of bread, one slice of gluten-free bread. So on your starch, your serving size are either fist or hand. On your fruit, your serving size are a fist. Now, if you still want to lose weight, we want to make these substitutions in. I'll go over what that means. So um, I think with blood type A, they were allowed to have four fists of veggies for breakfast. That was their breakfast carbohydrate servings. So let's just say that they want to have fruit for breakfast. They can take away one fist of veggies and have three fists of veggies instead of four, and they can substitute in one fist of fruit. So instead of four fists of veggies, three fists of veggies, one fist of fruit, and that's how you can substitute in a fruit into that breakfast. It's the same thing for every blood type. If you're an O, if you're a B, if you're an AB, if you're allowed to have a fist or two fists or three fists of vegetables, you can pull one fist of vegetables out and put in a fist of fruit. Now, I know O blood types are only ha allowed to have one fist of veggies for breakfast, which isn't a lot, and they don't do well with a lot of carbohydrates. So they can substitute that fist of veggies for a fist of fruit, or they can do half a fist of fruit and a half a fist of veggies, one or the other. It doesn't matter, or just veggies. Um, A's are allowed to have more carbs, so they have a little bit more, a couple of fists of uh, veggies and a fist of fruit. So it's a direct substitute. One fist of veggies, one fist of fruit. Very, very simple. Um, we ask that you have no more than two fruits a day. Two fruits a day, max. So only having fruit at every meal, no more than two fruits a day. Also, it should never be for dinner. Not at dinner time. 
So anytime you have fruit, have it with breakfast, have it with lunch, use it as a snack or part of a snack, but you never want to have it for dinner. And again, no more than two a day. And that would be for all blood types. When it comes to starches, one fist or one hand of starch equals two fists of veggies. So if you want to add a fist of a starch in, say you want to add a yam in, you've got to pull out two fists of vegetables off your meal plan. So um, going back to the A blood type for breakfast where they were allowed to have four fists of vegetables, we took one fist out and put a fist of fruit in. So let's just say that they want to have a fist size worth of oatmeal, one serving of oatmeal. So if they want to have oatmeal for breakfast, that's two fists of veggies, so that would be one here. So if you're an A blood type, you can have a serving of oatmeal, which counts as two fists of veggies. You can have a fist of fruit, maybe chop up a cup of berries and put in the oatmeal. And then you have one fist of vegetables left. That if you, want to, you, know, you have to have your proteins and fats with it, so you want to make like a, a vegetable omelet with that. And that's a lot of food, especially for an A blood type. It's a bowl of oatmeal with some fruit and a nice omelet with some vegetables in it. That will fill you up and get you going. All right, so instead of having four fists of veggies, they've changed things up. So that's how that would work for an A blood type. As we said, again, the substitution is two fists of veggies equals one fist or a hand of starch. Right. Um, next thing is, like, if you're an O blood type, you're only allowed to have one fist of veggies, say, for breakfast. Then you can't have a whole starch for breakfast because that's two fists. So what that would be is instead of a fist of veggies, you can have a half a starch. So an, yeah, so an, an example would be like a, um, a half of a gluten-free bagel. Um, another example would might be um, a half of a, a baked potato or something along those lines. It's not a lot, but you know, always can have a lot of, of uh, carbs anyway. Another um, option for no blood type, which, which would be have no vegetables or no carbohydrates for breakfast, and then take that carb, that fist of vegetables, and have for lunch. So now you have two fists of vegetables and lunch instead of one. And what you can do there is have a nice baked potato at that point. So um, you can save them from one meal to another. I would um, probably refrain from doing that for dinner time because I don't want to end load your carbohydrates at night. So, um, so taking that fist of veggies away from breakfast and putting it at lunch is fine. Or taking it from, from lunch and putting it at breakfast would be fine. You know? So say you take that fist of uh, veggies from lunch if you're an obit blood type, and now you're allowed to have two fists of veggies um, for breakfast. And what you can do is say, listen, so instead of just oatmeal, which is the same as two fists of veggies, you can do a half a serving of oatmeal, right? And then you can do like maybe half a serving of fruit. Then you have a small bowl of oatmeal with a little bit of fruit with your eggs and everything else. So you can cut these things in half and, and move them throughout the day. Again, we're just not going to end load them. So as I said before, with fruits, anytime you add them in, you add them in for breakfast, lunch, or snacks. The same thing with starches. You want to have your starch either for breakfast or lunch. You don't want to add it at dinner. Um, I wouldn't really want to put those, those high energy starches late at night. Um, the only exception would be is if the next morning you're going to run like a, a half a marathon, a 10K or something like that, and you need some extra carbs. Then at that point I'd say, hey, listen, if you want to have a starch at night, that's fine because, you know, we can load up, up overnight and then burn it off the next day. But that's the only exception to the rule. Um, and that would happen not as often, um, not that often. So that's the only exception. So just to get this straight, and again, I don't want to confuse many people, but we're basically talking about adding in fruits and starches into your meal plan to continue to lose. And because we want to continue to lose, you have to watch your calories, and that's why we're substituting things in and out. Uh, when it comes to maintenance, if you just want to kind of maintain where you're at, well, that's easy. Well, you can add up to one starch and two fruits a day on top of what you're eating. Um, and um, that is only going to run around one, two, three, four. It's only going to be another th extra 300 calories a day. You're allowed to have an extra 500 calories a day um, when you're maintaining. Um, because we have you on a caloric deficit to lose weight, OK? If you keep on that deficit, you should technically still be losing weight. Um, if you don't want to lose weight anymore, then we have to up the calories so that you're not continue to lose. So it's usually around 500 a day. So you can add 100 extra calories to each meal and snack if you want, spread it out throughout the day. You would never want to end load that at the other end of the day, and you wouldn't just want it to be all carbohydrates. So when we add the fruit and the starch in, that's only going to run around two or 300 calories. You're going to want to also up your proteins and fats. Maybe add an extra serving of fat to breakfast and lunch, 
or maybe add an extra serving of protein at breakfast or lunch to compensate. But uh, on a maintenance program, you can eat a little bit more just to maintain. You can't go too crazy because start gaining again, but you can head up to about 500 calories. If you need help with that, you can text me, email me, or call me. Um, so basically, this is it. It's, it's really very, very simple. You know, if you, if you want some other foods to eat, this is how you add in fruit. This is how you add in starches. You want to stick to your blood type specific fruit and starches. They're in the manual that we sent you. Uh, so some blood types are able to have gluten-free bread and some aren't. Some blood types are able to have yams or quinoa um, or any of those gluten-free grains. That would be fine. Yes, Pete, you have a question? Do that again because you, you, you abort, oh. start with the blood type. You may, make sure that you stick to your blood type. Okay. So um, when you are adding fruits and starches into your program, you want to make sure that they're blood type specific. So you want to stick to your blood type. So there are certain blood types who can have bread. Um, there are certain blood types that can. There are certain blood types that can have potatoes and certain ones that can't. Um, you want to look at gluten-free grains, you know, things like quinoa, um, oatmeal, kasha, things like that. But those are all listed. They're all listed in starches. And also your blood type specific fruits are in there also. So again, um, that's all you need to be doing. If you have any questions, you know, you can still contact me or your nutrition counselor. You can text, email, or call, um, whether you continue with us or not. Um, you can have questions about this. So I'm still more than happy to answer them and help guide you in the right direction. Um, so as I said before, you know, some people um, didn't lose what they want to lose during the six weeks. Some people did. Um, some people take longer than others. Everybody has different genetics. Um, other different people have different amounts of time to a lot to the workout. Some people are commuting to the city. Some people are working out of home, so they have a little more time. So you have to realize what your situation is, not compare yourself to other people. But I can guarantee you that if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to continue to lose weight. You're going to continue to feel better. Most of you guys have put on some muscle tissue which is going to help you burn more fat in the future. So you want to make sure that you maintain the muscle tissue you put on so you can continue to lose weight. I was going over this with a couple of people at the final weigh-in. I think one person had gained maybe eight or nine pounds of muscle, and we figured out that over the course of a year, without doing anything extra, if they just maintain that muscle, they're going to burn off an extra 14 pounds of fat throughout the course of the year. It's just going to come off. So that's a good thing about building muscle. It's not so great for the scale, but for your future of, of fat burning, it's, it's really pretty amazing. So. Um, there we have it. This is how we add things in. For, uh, to continue to lose, we substitute those foods in. If you do want to maintain, you can just add them in along with a little bit of extra fat and protein, and everything will be good. Um, in the manual, there are some modifications that we put in, which I'll, I'll cover real quick. OK, so next I want to do, as I said before, if you want to be a little more aggressive weight loss, um, I want to show you some modifications you can add into your nutrition plan. And they're in the manual. Um, So these are modifications that you can use. So um, for an example, uh, one modification is um, you do a three-day cycle. So you eat a certain way for three days and then repeat that every three days. So one way you can do is on um, day number one, um, just eat the way you've been eating. Eat for the 21-day program. Just eat your usual day. That's day number one. Then the second day, what you do is eat the same thing, the 21-day program that you've been following, but substitute in two fruits. So day one, there's no fruits, no starches, just eating the way you've been eating. Day two, you're going to substitute in two fruits for two fists of vegetables. And then day three, what you do is you eat the same as your 21-day program, but you substitute in a starch. So day one, no fruits, no starches. Day two, we substitute in two fruits instead of two veggies. And then day three, what we do is we have no fruits, but we substitute in a starch in instead of two fists of vegetables. So this is day one, two, three, and what you do is just keep rotating that. Day one, day two, day three, and then go back to day one, day two, day three. And you rotate that for like three weeks. And it's just your body's getting hit with different amount of calories and different types of substrates, and it's more apt to make a change. So that's one of the modifications that you can use. A second modification, which is also in the manual that we emailed you, is another three-day modification where you do is you d take day one and day two, and eat just the regular 21-day program which you followed. You know, you have your proteins, fats, and vegetables. And day three, what you do is you substitute in two fruits and one starch. So that third day is like a, like a party day, right? You, you diet for two days like you've been dieting. And day three, we're substituting in fruits, two fruits and a starch. And what you do is it's a three-day rotation or modification, and just keep doing that every three days. This one's a pretty effective way of doing it because you kind of get some, some satisfaction every third day and your body's um, 
going to respond to the change that you're going through. So that's the second type of modification. And then the next thing we want to go over, um, somebody had asked, is just to be a little more specific on the starches and the fruits that you can add in. I'd like to cover some of the starches that you're going to be allowed to add into your programs. And these are for all blood types. So when I talk about starches, some people don't understand what starches are. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So when we talk about starches that you can add in, and again, we discussed the amounts already and when you can add them in, are things like beans and legumes, um, cereals, breads, pasta, rice, uh, potatoes, and yams, quinoa. So these, these are all gluten-free starches. So when we talk about bread and cereal, these should be gluten-free. Okay, so like some examples of gluten-free cereals would be oatmeal, uh, kasha, which is buckwheat, which is gluten-free, uh, cream of rice, rice bran, um, oat bran, any rice or oat-based, those are all gluten-free. We're talking about breads. There's a lot of different types of gluten-free bread. There's gluten-free bread, gluten-free bagels, gluten-free rolls. Um, there are gluten-free wraps, gluten-free pancakes. Um, we're not going to be giving you a lot of these things, but the small amount you're allowed to have, those bread products should be gluten-free. Uh, we talk about uh, rice, you know, all types of rice are fine. Rice is gluten-free. And then we talk about pasta. Well, it has to be gluten-free pasta. And most of those are either rice-based. There's gluten-free, uh, there's um, like a brown rice pasta. There's quinoa pasta. There's like a quinoa corn blend pasta. There's bean pastas. So there's a lot of different types of gluten-free pastas. You're not allowed to have a lot because, as you know, the serving size is a fist. But when you do have it, you want to make sure it's the right type. And then, again, we have potatoes and yams. You know, one starch is a potato or yam the size of your hand. And then quinoa, uh, which again is a gluten-free uh, grain. So these grains are starches. These are the types you're allowed to add in. Again, it's a fist size or a hand size. And it's only one per day, not for breakfast. I mean, either for breakfast or lunch or just as a snack, but not for dinner. Uh, when it comes to fruits that you're allowed in, pretty much any fruit. I mean, every, every, every uh, blood type has certain fruits that are good for them and certain ones that aren't. So I want you to refer to your, your uh, blood type list for the fruits. But I think I know uh, pretty much, I think like um, blueberries and cherries are pretty much good for all blood types. But there's at least 15, 20 different fruits that are good for each blood type. So you want to stick with your blood type specific fruits as much as possible when we're adding those in. Um, I know some of you guys have used the intermittent fasting um, during the last three weeks of the six week program. Um, if you're feeling good in that, you're not feeling hungry, then just keep, keep fasting away until you get down to your, your goal weight. And on your, um, <coughs> I would suggest using the starches and fruits on your non-fasting days. You're probably better off doing it on non-fasting days than on fasting days. Fasting days, you probably want to keep your proteins and fat intake up a little higher to help keep uh, hunger away. Um, so that would be my recommendation. And uh, other than that, um, if you, again, I hate to keep saying this, but you know, if you need guidance, <coughs> if you have questions, um, just give us a call, email, text, or stop in. So. Um, Thanks for doing the program. We hope you'll continue and um, stay in touch. So based on all of your testimonials, you guys did such a great job and you've proven that you can do it. You've increased your energy, you've lost body fat, you've increased your lean muscle tissue, which is so amazing because by increasing your lean muscle tissue, your bone density is stronger. Um, your, your body is stronger, your tendons, your ligaments are stronger, um, and you're sleeping better. Um, all of the symptoms that have dissipated are incredible. I've heard that acid reflux is gone, your skin is cleared up, digestion issues have been healed, migraines kaput. We want you to keep the passion that you've had the past six weeks. We don't want you to go backwards. We want you to keep going forwards. If you need another nutrition session um, to reinforce what you should be doing, just reach out to us. Um, some of you are continuing with us, and we're so happy about that. Um, just to keep in mind the body fat challenge after offer specials that we are running. Um, if you do a three-month or a six-month personal training package, you get a concurrent class package with that. Um, and if you purchase a class package, if you do three months, you get one month free. And if you get six months, you get two months free. So 
We uh, would love to see you continue at the club. So keep it going. Be healthy, you guys. Hope to see you down at the club again. Bye.